Hi and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast. I'm not going to ask him if he's behaving um, because there's no point because he never behaves. Have well, you? Yeah, I'm always behaving, man. Do you know what? There's this thing on social media like people seem to... Here we go. No, 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 no. But it just seems to be this common thing over the last few weeks that the moment you post a video or I post a video or something else, I've either been fighting, I've been arrested, I'm a drug dealer... I beat my missus up, um, I don't have access to my kids, it's like, you know what, it, it's a joke at first, but it's now becoming boring, it's like, really. I tell you, ignore it, man. I'm ignoring it, I'm just letting them carry on, and it's just I the mean, same thing. And how it's, sad is it, if somebody's there, post it, oh, I know, I've said it a You know what I mean, we, I know we joke when we, we had the show initially with the breeze block walls and stuff, and it's like, mm. Robbie is DT's parole officer, and DT's in prison, and blah, blah, mm. blah. Yeah, all right, we have a laugh and a joke, but it's, I'm on about, like, as soon as we've done a video on Arsenal Fan TV, some of the comments are like, DT got arrested tonight, he just punched someone up, and this, that. And mm. there are some people out there that genuinely... Every video I see that. Yeah. DT's been arrested. You know what I mean? And there are people <laughs> that are messaging me and going... Are you okay? Is everything all right? I heard you got arrested. <laughs> what? Do you know? And then I've had people make, is it true that you, um, you've been done for assault on your, your missus? And st what? No! <laughs> it's like, go away, man. Just get a life. But well, yeah, I've been behaving. All right, it's good that you're behaving. But so, listen, the subject that we're going to discuss today is one that I know you've spoken about a lot over the years. And uh, one, Arsene Wenger. There's only one, not, you know what, I heard that Thank song for a long time. I heard it last night, actually. Did you? Yeah, Man City fans were singing it. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that is where we've got to on this. Yeah. And um, there's no trying to skirt the issue. There's no trying to beat around the bush. We have to talk now today about the manager. We've had back-to-back uh, -back feats by Manchester City. Uh, first of all, I thought the, more, the most embarrassing one for me was the cup final because we normally turn up in cup mm. finals and we were absolutely so poor I think in that final. I think the first half of the game yesterday was even worse. You think because, so? Yeah, because you know what? For the, I first, don't. for the first 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of the cup final, I thought we had a good foothold of the game and we should have been 1-0 up. Um, with the chance with Aubameyang. I thought we started well um, in, in, in... No, 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 but what I mean is, is then we got to half-time in the cup final at 1-0 and you think, right, we're still in the game. We're still in this game. We've got a big chance here. We can, you know, maybe come out a little bit different in the second half. Man City were not playing at their best. Nowhere near. Last night, within half an hour, game's game dead. Done. I thought... I, I, I looked at the two games. I thought the first game was mainly down to a lack of effort and desire by Arsenal. Completely, and we got battered in that final and it could have been even worse. And then I look at the second game and I say to myself, there was fight and a bit more, not enough, but a bit more desire in that game. But in that game, the gulf between them and us, and us was frightening. And the, the tactical difference between the two teams was frightening. And then I started looking at Arsenal this year. You know what? Let me just go through, yeah? January. Haven't we lost the most games of we've any lost, Premier League team? We've lost the most games in all competitions. So more games in all competitions than any Premier League team. Any Premier League team, which is absolutely frightening. And let me go through. This is January, since January. Arsenal 2, Chelsea 2. That was, um, obviously, that was, uh, that was in the league. Yeah. That was in the league. Game we were losing, came back. Um, FA Cup, knocked out of the FA Cup. Nottingham Forest 4, Arsenal 2. Carabao Cup drew 0-0 with Chelsea. First leg. Lost away to Bournemouth 2-1. Beat Crystal Palace 4-1 at home. Beat... Chelsea in the second leg of the Carabao Cup, 2-1. Went away to Swansea, lost 3-1. Then beat Everton, 5-1. Lost 1-0 to Tottenham. Went away, beat Ostersons, 3-0. Came back, 
lost to Ossesons 2-1, lost to Man City 3-0, and then 3-0 again, um, in, in, 3-0 in the, in, in the final, Carabao Cup, and 3-0 in the league. And, um, sorry, that is a horrendous record. I know that over the years you've been a guy, um, you know, sort of since you've been coming on this channel, that has been advocating that you you think it's time for the manager to leave. Um, I've tried to put various arguments and you know play devil's advocate and also put um, also put arguments where possibly you know you know we should give him a further chance. I'm finding it really hard at the moment when I'm interviewing fans. Somebody somebody uh, sent me a message the other day and they said, Robbie, you don't have any balance on Arsenal fan TV at the moment. You know what I mean? Everything's just Wenger out, Wenger out. Everybody's just Wenger out. What's everyone and I had to respond to the guy and said, listen, I've been desperately trying to find people that are going to put up a case for Arsenal Wenger. And I find it so hard. It's just time. So difficult that even when I've spoken to people who have said, you know what, give him a bit more chance than that. <laughs> and I said to them, come on, they're like, you know, actually, I'm not sure if I'd really want to go on and back in publicly. That's what it's got to. And Arsene Wenger is still hanging on. He's uh, got a contract till the um, end of um, 2019 mm -hmm. season. And he's basically come out and said that I'm sticking to that contract. I've never broken a contract well, that was in all the years. City, wasn't it? The, well, he's the still, game. yeah, but he's still not come out and said any, any different. Did you see his post-match... Um comments about um, that was one of the best intensities we've played at. I couldn't believe that. And <laughs> I really know, I, I'm really now finding it, He's you know, I'm Robbie. finding it as a, as a person that's interviewing fans, I'm finding it difficult to find anybody's backing him at the moment. And it's really sad to see at the moment because I'm starting to see, I mean, I, you, I think you described him last night as Mugabe. Arsene Mugabe. Arsene Mugabe. And the way it's starting to look that, if some sort of decision isn't made soon, I don't want to see him hounded out. I really don't. He's a legend of this club. Do you know club. what? I'm, He's a legend. Do you want me to be honest with you? He deserves everything he gets. I'm sorry. He deserves everything he gets because he uh, bought this on himself. How would many you years? like to see him hounded out? Come on. Listen, Robbie, it's got to a point now where I care more about Arsenal Football Club than Arsene Wenger. Okay? And he's destroying this club. So as far as I'm concerned, get him out at all costs. I don't care anymore. Get him out. What would you say? Get, um, would you say to Arsene Wenger, end of the season? No, do you know what I would honestly do? I You're would in get, charge. I would, get You're rid, in charge. I would get rid of him now and I'd put someone else in charge and I would try and make something of the last remaining part of the season. But are you going to get now? To, because listen, no, I think put, of no, it, think of it long term. Right, care, caretaker in charge till the end you, of the season. You would take a, a yes, caretaker I, I would. I'll put a caretaker in charge till the end of the season. We're not going to get relegated. All right? We're effectively out of the top four anyway. Yeah. All right? So all we've got to play for is the Europa. Can a caretaker do any worse than Arsene Wenger? So then why bring in a caretaker? Let have a bit because, of respect because, for the guy. No, because bringing in a caretaker and totally you know, giving something a lift around the club, yeah, and the players a different voice and a different, you know, environment might be the difference between us winning the Europa League. It could happen. Remember, let me give you a prime, you let me give you a prime example. Let me give you a prime example. Chelsea, hmm. yeah? Didn't they sack their manager and then bring in Di Matteo? Mm -hmm. And what did he go and win? Champions League. Different voice different ideas. I would honestly look at the likes of bringing in uh, Henri to take over to the rest of the season. Can he do any worse? No. And then if Thierry Henri comes into that dressing room, comes into that training ground and that environment, as a player, are you going to listen to him? Of course you're going to listen to him. The likes of Eden Hazard and all that have said about their training at Belgium. Eden Hazard's one of the best players in the world, but yet he sits up and takes notices of Thierry Henry. Because why would you not? Mm. World Cup winner, European winner, Champions League winner, Premier League winner, golden boots. So just to the end of the season? To the end of the season, then we assess the situation. 
can another man do any worse than Arsene Wenger right now? That team are not playing for him. That team look void of ideas. There's no passion. There's no hunger. There's nothing there. I mean, Even the new players look, look like they've been here for years. <laughs> That's the scary thing. We've turned Bamiang into Sonogo in four weeks. He looks completely lost out there. But he's getting Why? no service, is well, he? I was watching it last no night. No service I was watching whatsoever. it last night. And they're pumping the ball long up to him. And I'm like... Everyone over here as well. Why? Why are you trying to make him fight for the ball in the air against Vincent Company? Come on. It's common sense, Robbie. Do you know what I mean? And this is why we moan. It's common sense, man. Play well, one, one, of, one of the biggest differences, in particular the game in the league, one of the biggest differences is I looked at Man City and you can see a team that's drilled. Every time they had the ball, I looked out um, from where I was sitting, I could see Sane and Danilo, they hugged the touchline. Straight right. away, boom, straight over. They run over and they hug that touchline as soon as they get the ball. That's obviously been drilled into them. Yeah. That's not, you know, Junior. they're not strolling around. They hug it. And then as soon as, as soon as City lost the ball, they sprinted back into the, um, Sane into the middle and uh, Danilo back into position. Sane, over the both games, absolutely tore us to shreds. He had Bellerin on the floor practically every time he had the ball. Mm. And I was hearing, I heard a City fan the other day on the radio saying that apparently he, Sane, had a poor game against Wigan, that game when they lost in the FA Cup. And Pep Guardiola apparently pulled him to one side and said, yeah, what are you doing, man? If you buck your ideas up, I know you've been playing well this season, but any more performances yeah. like that, you're, you're out. Yeah. And then you look around the pitch at Arsenal, and there's guys like, you know, Bellerin, Mustafi, Granit Xhaka, those three in particular I could pick out that have had poor game after poor game after, and they're still playing. They still know that every week they're going to play. They're starting. You, you know, there was... Um, Unless they're injured. We were talking about Henri, and I remember him having a conversation about Pep Guardiola when he went to Barcelona. And he said that Pep used to say to him, if he puts you on the wing, if you ain't out on that wing and getting chalk on your boots, he'll pull you off. And Thierry, I remember, can't remember the exact words of what it was, but in one of his interviews, he said that he drifted away. And Pep went mad at him on the touchline. You see Pep there barking instructions. They're three nil up, two and nil he's up. Barking he's barking instructions. instructions. And Arsene Wenger sat there like this. And, and Arsene just sat there. And sat there with Steve Bold, looking like the Chuckle Brothers. And I, 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 I just, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, it's done. It's, it, it's you done. know, there's no, there's no, there doesn't seem to be any tactical formation to Arsenal. As I said, when I looked at City, when I looked at Tottenham the other day, right? These look like drilled teams. They are players that know they have a job to do, right? Mm. It's not just about your talent. Your job is to do this. Your job is to do that. And they carry it out. And they, they, they live or die by those tactics of the manager. Where at Arsenal, especially away from home, there doesn't seem to be a definitive tactic. I don't know what our style is anymore. We ain't got an idea. Our, you know, uh, when, when, when Wigan identity. played Manchester City, their style was part of the bus. Yeah. When Liverpool played Manchester City, these are two teams that beat City. When Liverpool beat Manchester City, their style was all out attack. We're going to go for you. We know you're great, but we're going. When we play City, I don't know what we were trying to do. There's no, was it attack? Like I said, no was identity. it defence? What, what was it? What was the? Uh, there is no identity. Um, Ray Parler went to visit the training ground about a year or so ago, and he said there's no difference now to when he was there in 2004. It's 2018, mm. Robbie. In 14 mm. years, nothing's changed. There's no intensity no to the training, team, is there? He, even Henri last night said that with Guardiola in training, <laughs> he expects 100%. If you're giving 99.9%, he walks off from the training ground. Don't want to train you guys. You're not putting it in. Bye, see ya. And he walks off. Don't need to say nothing, but the players know that they've let him down. Mm. And then they pick up... And you know if you let him down... There you go. You could be gone. Yeah. And but at Arsenal, it's comfortable. It's, ah, yeah, I'll play yeah, next well, week. I'll play next week. So as I've always said, week. the comfort club. Exactly. Be you know, Bellerin's, from, Bellerin's comfortable. Mustafi's comfortable. Koscielny's mm. our captain. Czech's comfortable. 
Shaq is comfortable. Man United, you know, I know they've had their problems this season, but Man United, Mourinho, right? Whatever we want to say about him, right? They know who's in charge there. He's dropped Pogba, their main guy. Mm. Pogba. He's like, you're... And bench. then he's fixed up by the next game. He dropped not for one game, for several games. When they asked him why they dropped him, he said, yeah, well, in that previous couple of games, he didn't play well enough. Would we see that at Arsenal? Of course you wouldn't. At Granite Xhaka, I can't tell you the last time this guy had a good game. I've been willing him to succeed. I mean, I, I remember at the, at the end of last season, I was like, you know what, it's too early to judge. He's mm. just come in. It's a league, it's quick. You know, you don't get... He's doing the same things, if not worse, this season. He, he, uh, uh, Granite thinks he has half an hour on the ball. This is the Premier League. You don't get that amount of time. But do you think it's the players or the manager? It's the manager. The, the, the players, we've got good players there. We've got good players. We've got two of the most potent strikers in world football. Mm. And look at them now. But Come there's on. no service to these guys. There's no, no, I know that, but... There's no, you know, there's no width in the team. There's no creativity in midfield. I just don't get what's going on. It's just... But this is what I'm saying. There just is absolutely nothing in the team anymore. Nothing at all. And that's the problem and things have got to change. Because until it changes... But you're saying right now you'd say, Arsene, if you was in charge, if you was the uh, chairman, you're Ivan Gazidis, um, or Stan Kroenke, should we say, he's the one who makes the big decisions. Yep. You, you'd say to him, Arsene, you're done, mate. It's T done. Tomorrow. So you'd go in there today and say, Bye -bye. Uh, can you pack your... Pack clear your, out your thing? Pack your stuff. That's a bit... Oh. No. I feel a bit uncomfortable. I don't care about uncomfortability or nothing. We don't owe him anything. He's an employee. He's an employee, okay? but because it's like, it's like you've, day, it's like it you've got an employee. It doesn't matter. And he's been brilliant for you over the years. And uh, you just turn around to him and say, mate, pack your things and get out. You know Welcome what I mean? Welcome to the harsh world of business. That's a bit hard, man. Sorry, but no, because at the end of the day, right, we, he had his chances to walk. Okay? He had his chances. They've left it in his hands to say, OK, I'm going to step down. And his stubbornness, his greediness. What if they come out and they say, right, at the end of your contract, we're definitely not renewing. If they came out and they said that no. now, do you think you that think would... You think I'm uh... putting up with another year of him? Are you mad? He said he never walks away from his... Well, that's I'm why just, somebody I'm just needs to step in and say, sorry, no. It's like being at a wedding, yeah? And you've got your drunk dad there. <laughs> and you know when they're like, I just want one more drink. One more. And you're like, you're going home. You're going home now. I just want one more. Get the fuck home now. <laughs> That's Arsene Wenger. He's like your drunk dad. That's quite dad. an analogy, isn't it? <laughs> He's like your drunk dad at a wedding and you just can't get him home. The guy's losing the plot. Are you seeing what he's saying in his interviews? We're not mocking when we say we think that there's something actually wrong with him. Is he losing his marbles? But listen, he's probably given you some of the, if not the greatest moments that you've ever seen watching Arsenal. A long time ago. Right. And he's also, hold given, on, me, hold on, hold he's on. also given me some of my biggest nightmares. Right, but he's given you some of the greatest ever moments that you've ever seen at Arsenal. Over the last three, four seasons, even though we ain't won the league, we've still won silverware. Would it be right to turn around to him and say, Arsene, sorry, mate, at the end of today, get your stuff together. Yeah. And leave. That's a bit because, hard. Because at Robbie, least give him till the end no, of this. No, because, Robbie, this is Arsenal Football Club and it's about what's best for the club. That's what this is about. This is not about Arsene Wenger. This is not about sending him off with a nice little... You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't would like. I would. I wouldn't like to see. I wouldn't like to see Arsene Wenger. I don't. Just, like, I don't think a lot of people unceremoniously would have liked it. No, just what you got to remember? Lifted and said, "Yeah, I, pack up your bags. Up, go No, 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 that's not right. Listen, listen. I don't like. I don't like. This don't. is Arsenal Football Club, as I said, and it's about what's best for us. And if what's best for us is him going, 
to try and salvage the last remaining thing we've got this season, all for it. All for it. All day. Let's say, that. let's say for argument's I'll be a bit sake. Uncomfortable let's with just that. say for argument's sake here, yeah, they do go and shift him out this week. So bye bye, see ya. We lose to Brighton at the weekend. Bye bye, gone, see ya, gone. The likes of an Henri comes in, yeah, and takes us to the Europa League and wins it. Ifs, ifs, ifs. Yes, I know it's ifs. But would you be moaning about the decision to do that? No, I wouldn't. We need to grow a pair but of d- balls. But I'm just saying, it feels a little bit uncomfortable to me. And I know, I, I think, I've said this before, that I think if you did a poll, um, based off of all the fans that I interview and speak to at games and the people that I sit with at games and stuff like that, based off of what I've feel this is just me now talking i think if you did a poll and you said do you want arsene wenger to leave i'd say i have to say right now if i'm being 100 percent honest 90 percent of the people would say yes he needs to leave if i didn't sort of switch that poll up a bit and i said do you think arsene wenger should be sacked tonight and gone i think it drops right down to about 30 40 percent i think because and the reason why that is is because people still have a lot of respect for him and they want him to go in a dignified way they want him they 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 know he's stubborn they know all the things that have gone on but they're they're like you know what it doesn't feel right to be just unceremoniously sacking a legend of the club like this um let's find a way for him to sort of Going a bit of, with a bit of class because he's a classy guy. Really? Have you seen some of his interviews? Come on, he's why a classy you, guy. Why, he's a classy why guy. Why you look at me? Why you look at me? No, that's now and again. Yeah, I'll tell you why we look at you because you're the one that's producing this bullshit. That's, that's why. Now I'll you, tell you what, I'll you're give you, picking up over all the, the years of him doing an interview. Scenario. Come on. I'll give you the perfect scenario. Last game of the season, we play Huddersfield. What better way for Arsene Wenger to have his last ever game against the team where our greatest manager ever came from herbert chapman yeah so you let him stay till the end of the season then if they, if it, that's the scenario herbert chapman yeah do you think if he came out actually and said you know what i hear you guys now i'm going at the end of the season do you think everybody would get behind him yeah they now? would would you get behind him? yeah i would because we have a clear pan i said it to you in the interview i said we have a clear pa- path of where we're going and you know, but at the moment, it's... If he said to you, if he comes out and says, right, people, I'm definitely going at the end of my contract. No. I've always seen my contracts out. No. The end of the one, I'm definitely 100... No. I'm t- I can tell everybody now I will not be signing a new deal. Nope. Nope. Not hoping else, chance. <laughs> nope. I'm not putting out with another year of that shit. Told if you he's the chief, if he was the chairman, he'd be one of them ones like... You know that, uh, what's the guy at QPR? Bria Tori. <laughs> the sack, 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 or that guy at Leeds. You'd be like... <laughs> Get out. Get out. You'd have like, eat a couple gone each month, wouldn't you? I'd win trophies though. <laughs> they ain't winning trophies, they're in a mess. I know. No. Well, then he's get me in charge. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Robbie, like what I said to you, yeah, that last season summed up that man perfectly for me. All right? We were sitting there over and over and over saying... The Arsene Wenger not telling us what he's going to do is damaging the club. It's damaging the team. It's damaging the performances. He was coming out in interviews. Now, that doesn't affect the players. They don't do anything. They're all right. They're doing their job. They don't worry about me. When the season came to the end, what did he turn around and say? Yeah, the uncertainty was affecting the players. He put himself before the team, before the club. How are you allowed to do that? We were saying it, and we were being called every name under the sun for it. I was pulling out banners and being called every name under the sun. Because, no, 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 Arsene's already said. Arson said in his interview, no, 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 it's not affecting the team. We must believe everything Sir Arson says. End of the season, he comes out and admits that it actually did affect him. Do you think that, um, I mean, what I saw last night as well is apathy. What, how many times have I said it, this? It's not just because the weather... Because Man City, many, Man City fans, t- yeah, exactly. they turned up. How they come times, all the way from Manchester. How many, now, times, how many times has the Emirates been empty this season? Quite a few, but what shocked me yesterday is never empty for a big game. 
Never. They're still never, no, no, never, no, no, over no, no, the no. years. Even, even Chelsea in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. Carabao Cup. I'm, I'm on about Premier League. No, but League. it's the semi-final. No, no, but I'm it's on about... the semi-final against Chelsea. Yeah, but I'm on about the Premier League. That stadium over the years. Over the years, but you this year... You can't get a ticket. It's out there, like 300, 400 quid they want for it. But this year, but this year, this even year, in the big games, there's been empty seats, especially right. in the top tiers. And there's guys, there's guys that are sitting near me, they're diehard fans. Diehard. They weren't there last night. Yeah, and there was a guy sitting in front of me. They weren't there. there they said, guy, oh, I can't be asked. There was a guy asked. sitting in front of me just to the left, yeah? Season ticket holder. They're every, se- every game. 3-0. Third goal went in. Bye-bye. Went on. Yeah. Um, honestly, uh, diehard guys. Diehard by me. Guys have been going for years at Highbury. Many... You know, even when, and, and those sort of fans as well have been behind Wenger, a couple of them. You know what I mean? When mm. things are going bad. The guy yet last night, next to me, who, who, who was next to me, a couple of his mates are normally there. They didn't even turn up, but it was me and him. Sort of, who's was about the only one in the row, right? And we were chatting. And he's diehard Wenger. And he's ultra positive. He's, he's like another tie, but, you know, he's ultra positive that he... He tries to will himself to be positive, and even him last night, he said, you know, end of the season, Rob, I think he's, t- he's got he's got it now, and we need a change. I think everybody is mm. kind of starting to say it, but are the boards going to no, make that there, change? There's a, you're saying that there's is, a guy behind me, yeah, must be in his 50s, um, fingering massively. Turn around to me last night. He always has laughs and jokes with me during the course of games and throughout the season and stuff. Turn around to me at the end of the game last night and he tapped me on the shoulder and he went, I'm part of your gang now. He goes, I want him out. He goes, I've had enough, that's it. And I was like, welcome to the club. I'll bring the banner next week, you can hold it with me. <laughs> 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 but it's your yeah, club. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's it's just like it, it Jamie Carragher, right? I saw what he said. Um, after the game, when he was with Henri and stuff. And he's, he, <laughs> this is what makes me laugh. He said the same kind of things we've been saying. And they get praise for it. And we've been slagged off for it and called every name under the sun. And yet we're the actual fans that put the money down to go every single week and whatever. And it's, and you know, and he said it. He said that for the first time ever, he's noticed that he goes, last year, there was anger. There was fierce volatile anger towards Arsene Wenger and there was planes the protest and planes and, that, and yeah. banners and, and it was, they want him out, want him out, want him out, want mm. him out. And the moment they didn't get him out and it's gone into this season, it's turned into apathy. Yeah. People are now going, don't care, not bother going, can't be bothered. Do you know how many people have sacked off Brighton this weekend? I've got people left, right and centre going, no only one wants a ticket. No one wants a ticket. People that go week in, week out, hard and, uh, and away Bright, Brighton normally would be it's a, a game where you get no tickets for you know because I mean? it's, number, it's on one a Sunday. Is, number one is not far from London. Yeah. Number two is right by the seaside. <laughs> well, the weather this week, yeah. but it's right by the seaside. But it's a Sunday. And it's one of them grounds that you, you know, we, I mean, we're going in the FA Cup. So it's yeah. a nice ground to visit. Yeah. And people are like, no, I can't bother can't bother. Yeah, it, being on a Sunday, a lot of people would go up there on the Saturday, spend the night out yeah. on Saturday night, go to go to the game on the Sunday. People are like, no, nah, I can't bother. Can't bother. I know people that have booked their tickets for Milan, which came out the day before we played Man City. I think it came out Wednesday, I think it was. Um, and they've already paid their £27, I think the tickets were, something like that. Um, and after last night, they're like, no, nah, I'm not going. And I've actually seen people online going, I've got five tickets for Milan. Let me know if you want me to ask the club and to again, change name on them. And, and again, once upon a time, you wouldn't be able to get a ticket for no. Milan away. No, and I think they offered us 4,000 with the option of an extra 1,000. Yeah, good luck for that. You might as well have offered us 1,000. Not a lot of people want to go. They're just kind of bothered. Can't bother. Can't bother with anything. This club can't be bothered. The players can't be bothered. They can't turn up. Do you think the board are listening? Do you think the board are actually there listening now? Because you know what? There's, ba- there's, there's, there's one thing I think that's more powerful than banners, planes being flown over and no stuff like that. Out. When you are a board member, you're sat in that stadium and you're looking around last night and you're like, Jesus, this is Man City at home. Top of the league clash. Well, <laughs> no, it's not top of the league clash. <laughs> They're top of the league, but you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's 30. 30 points above us. Jesus Christ. If they man. lose their last 10 games, 
Yeah, and we win our last 10, we can win the league on goal difference. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like tie, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but um, they're looking around and they're saying, these are two top teams playing here, right? Two big teams. This place normally be packed. They come out and they sat in the diamond lounge seats or whatever, in their director box seats, and they're scanning the stadium. And all they can see is empty seats. And that's got to send a powerful message. Of course it is. They've got to be looking there and thinking... And, and then to and, then lose three 0 And Josh Cronkey's here. They're looking and they're thinking, they're, we've got big problems. There, here. There's a reason why Josh Cronkey's big here. Big problems. There's a reason although, why. He's been although, there. sorry, just to cut you there. Although, reports are out that we've made a profit over the last six months. It's apparently. amazing how they keep bringing that out every time we have a few bad results, isn't it? They like we're going to turn around and go, yay! <laughs> you made fifty-six million pounds. Yeah, Stan can go and buy another fucking ranch. But can't then, he? but then that has an effect as well because that's how he could be looking on it. Because you know, um, Stan Kroenke, when he bought Arsenal, he was worth about five hundred million. Now it's worth way over a billion. Yeah, he's doubled his investment. Yeah, and one of the guys that have kept that stable to help him to double his investment is Arsene Wenger. And what does that say? Hence to why. Time? Hence why. Probably, he's but like, there, you know what? But there is I'll a reason. It. There is a reason why Josh Cronkey is here at the moment, and why he's staying here for three months. And what do you think that is? I, I'm hoping, but I do actually think it's to oversee everything and get rid of Arsenal. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think that he's strong enough to do that? Yeah. It's do you think Sir Chips Keswick? Wants well, Wenger to leave. Keswick wanted. Does, uh, Keswick and Ivan Gazidis were two of the ones within the board that were trying to get him out last year. They were two, but it was Stan Kroenke. Josh Kroenke wanted him out as well, but Stan weren't budging. But I think but, it's and it's his club. But I think and it's if he ain't budging. But what you got to remember is the next in line is Josh. Stan's not getting any younger. I think he's nearly eighty or something now. Can't remember exactly how old he is. It's key that he sent his son over to deal with this. You know, it's like in previous cup finals and stuff like that. Stan would always be here. He weren't there on Sunday against Man City. Well, we can't read into no, that. No, no, no. I heard all this last but year. But he's got problems going back, back. I heard all of this last year. Yeah, I know and we heard it all last, last year. At the end but, of last year. But, but, remember how bad it was last yes, year. Yes, I know it was bad. But then they all thought. End of the you know season. What? But then they all thought. But then they all thought. Oh well, maybe it might change, and we give him. We'll give him the players we've. Tied they've down actually given to a new contract. We give you a Bamiyang. We give you Lacazette. We, you know, they've done all a these guy things. Was saying to me and it's got worse. A guy was saying to me yesterday, yeah, but they, were, they haven't given him the money, Robbie. I said, are you kidding me? Are you mad? I go, nah, that's no longer an excuse. They're giving him money. Granite Jack at thirty-five million pounds. Mustafi thirty-five million pounds. A Bamiyang sixty-five million. Um, uh, Lacazette fifty odd million, right? They've been giving him money to spend. Yeah, exactly. They've been giving him money to spend. I, I, I'm sorry, the money thing, t spending on players, I, I don't think that's an excuse. No, no we, it ain't an excuse. There are players, there are key players that we need. And then why have we not bought a holding midfielder? The glaring, obviously, things that we need over the years, why have we not done that? So, I, I don't think I, that's I, an like excuse. I, like I said to you, I, it is hope as to why he's here, but I think it is quite significant that he's come here for three months. He hasn't made a passing visit, he's actually come over to stay for three months. He's got a flat in London, um, and all I see right now is his face everywhere. What will you do if at the end of the season they say he's definitely staying on, he's definitely renewing his contract? He's definitely, not renewing, but he's definitely um, seeing out his contract. You have to try and get behind the team. So that's why to. they could be banking on it. You have to. Well, you know, because, because at the end of the day. Because they've got a lot of. Listen, they've got a lot of respect for this guy. You know what I mean? As I'm saying, he's made them a lot of money. He's never hung them out to dry. He's, you know, because they've, they've done some. You know, they messed up over the but years. Then I also, and he's yeah. always been right at the forefront and sticking up for them and everything like that. So they're probably looking at it like, but yeah, that's we, why we, I think we, we own this guy. You know what I mean? It's a bit I of loyalty is required. That's why I think they're doing it softly, softly at the moment in the hope that they can give him that nudge so I, at the I, end of this season. I don't know, man. I think they might make him see out his contract. I, 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 I think... Because so. he's not... What's going to change? What's going to change? Honestly. <laughs> Nothing. Look at the mess we're in now. What's going to happen? All of a sudden, Benga says, OK, it's my last year. We're going to turn into fucking Barcelona. No, we're not. Because he's still fucking so far from anyone with tactics or anything. He's miles behind. We're 30 points behind Man City. 
Next year, it'll be fucking 50. What did I say to you after we lost to Man City at the Etihad? We're a top eight team. And people looked at me and went, really? You're looking at me like that now? The only reason why we haven't dropped from sixth is because Burnley have been through such an awful run in the last 10 games. If a team behind us would have actually put a bit of consistency together, we wouldn't be sixth. We'd be seventh, eighth. Exactly where I told you we would be. I've seen it. How many years have I been sitting here saying things to you and now people are going, do you remember when you said that? Do you remember when you said that? Do you remember when you said that? I wished I was wrong. I'd love to be sitting here now going, we're top of the league, 30 points ahead of Man City and blah, 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 blah. And you're going, ha, 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 DT, how do you feel? You was wrong. Yeah. I'd love that. Let's get positive on this thing now. No, there's nothing to be positive about. Sack him. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be positive. Then I'll be happy. Arsene Mugabe. Get rid of him. There's two games coming up. And if we was to win those next two games, it's all about, we know that wins changes the mood. If we could beat Brighton, oh, don't start we've been so man. poor. <laughs> Seriously, we've man. been so poor don't. away from home, Brighton. And if we could, if we could go at AC Milan and pull off it, so. <laughs> although you know the AC Milan that everybody was saying, oh, they've been. I'm uh, beating in 13. Gattuso's, haven't conceded a goal in six. Gattuso totally changed that team around. You know what I heard Gattuso said? He goes um, that he took over a dressing room where there was like. They'd lose the game and they'd go and take a selfie afterwards. Yeah. And he was saying He that, said it makes him sick. Yeah, he said it makes him sick. He goes, in his day when he played, you know what I mean? That would bother him for a week. Can you imagine him and I was kind of, you, And I was kind of thinking Arsenal players at the moment. Yeah. Can you imagine him looking after Hector Bellerin? Seeing my man parade around in pyjamas and posting on Instagram all the time. Gattuso are going to kick him in the head. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Some Get of the off shit. now. No, I'm on Get about all, the all of them. <laughs> Mustafi, every five minutes tweeting, back on top. Can someone explain to this guy that we're fucking miles off top? Do you know what I mean? Why do you keep tweeting, back on top? Top of what? But definitely these players, the attitude is wrong. Wrong! Because that's Look what I said. Oh, yeah, and, 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 what Gattuso said. You know, when I played, man, he goes, that would bother me. And I sometimes question that if it, how much it bothers these players, right? Undoubtedly, there's guys like Jack Wilshere. You can see it bothers him. You can see that, mm. right? Where was he against right? Man City? I don't know. No. Has he been? Is he? Is and he, he hasn't had a new contract yet. Is he, in, tru is he in trouble for opening his mouth? Saying it'd go on Arsenal fan TV. <laughs> <laughs> so been banned. Well, that's it. You're out of the team. You're out of the team now. How can you say that? Out, oh, right. No, um, out the door. <laughs> but um, I'm worried about the Jack Wilshere thing as well because he still ain't signed a new deal. Uh -huh. What's going on with that? Again, that's another thing. I but do these players? I don't know if they feel it like how we feel it. No, of course they don't. No chance do they feel it like. You know, we do. the no, next no, day. No, no, no. no after chance. that, you know, you can't watch match of the day. Your phone rings, you don't want to answer it. I had a guy say to me last night, he goes, well, I, he goes, I'm scared to open my WhatsApp group. Right? You know what I mean? We feel it. We feel it. Contrary to what people think, that, you know, they say, oh, making money. And, uh, we feel, I feel it, man. I, I, honestly, after that defeat the other day in the Carabao Cup final, I didn't even want to see any football, anything. I, I, I got into my car and I turned the radio off off because I'm like I don't even want to hear about it right now because I'm still so angry about what's gone on and I, I question sometimes if those players they're in such a comfort zone yeah and this is a football problem now you know what I mean you've got young players they think they I, I was I, I was arguing with troops last night because he was saying to me oh Reese Nelson this guy should be playing that I said I've, I love these guys you Reese Nelson's <laughs> Um, Maitland Niles, but they're all too comfortable. Willock, all these guys. But have they earned a position in the team? Mm. Even them, I know they've had limited time. Have they? Uh, the only guy I think, Adam, the one I feel really sorry for at the moment is Eddie. Eddie came in, Eddie scored those goals. Eddie's been devastating in the under 23s, and he's still caught. Last night, we're 3 0 down. We didn't even make a substitution. Yeah. Bring on Eddie. You guys warm it. Give. Say, go on and try and score a goal, mate. Yeah. Right? 
But I, from the young players right to the senior players, I question. Because the other day when Willock came on with the wrong boots on. I remember that. And then he in the Carabao go. Cup final, yeah. and he had slipping over, slipping over, and then he had to no, change his boots. No, in the Carabao Cup final. It Sorry, was, in, in, um, in uh, Ostersons, right? Yeah. And I'm like, the kids in the academy w where my son goes to, they get slaughtered for that. Mm. You come up with the wrong boots? Yeah. It's just not yeah. acceptable. Uh, you, it, if you're trying to break into the first team, I know, I if know, anything, I know. <laughs> when you come in, what the fault is sometimes of a lot of young players when they come into the team is that they're trying so hard to impress that they become nervous. or they. Be, but I see some of those guys sometimes, uh, they come in and it's almost like... Do you know what? You made me laugh when you said that. Strolling around a bit. You, when you said that about the academy thing, I'm, that made me laugh because obviously with Kieran at academy, I've seen it with him and... He has to take three different pairs of boots with him. Right? Um, he has to take actual 3G, 4G mm. boots. He has to actually take moulds for when grass is a little hard. And he has to actually take studs for soft. Mm. And he has to take indoor. Do you know what I like? Four, four different pairs in total. At my son's academy, they're not allowed to wear no coloured boots, no fancy pink, white. And I remember when, when he was first signing there, and I remember like one of the, the coach guys stood up and, he, and, you know, when one of the parents said, oh, why is that? You know, the kids that he said, listen, when they make it, wear whatever colour they want. But until then, everybody wears black, right? Because everybody's working together. Everybody's like trying to. When you make it, mm. when you're messy, now that we wear, wear what you want, <laughs> uh -huh, and yeah. this is the thing when it goes back to the Bellerin thing, that you know, when I was having a little discussion with somebody the other day, I'm not going to say who it is, and they were saying, Robbie, I think, you know, when some of your guys are having a go, you know, when they're doing the interviews and they're having a go about his hair and he's, the fact that he's at London Fashion Week, he's a human being, he is allowed to do what he wants. And I said, that is true, you are right. He, of course, <coughs> of course, Hector um, Bellerin is allowed to do what he wants, but I said, but when there's a direct correlation between different hairstyles, fashion shows, speaking at Oxford Unions and that, and your performances on the pitch have dipped and have been like that for quite a while, Mm. It's just a natural thing from fans where they start to say to themselves, well, they draw a direct correlation. They say, that has coincided with you being poor. So are you, have you lost focus? Because in football, you only need to lose a couple of percent. Yeah. And, you know, your performance can drop to nothing. And when Hector Bellerin first came into Arsenal's team, he was a breath of fresh air. He was brilliant. He was one of the players that had come through the system. I don't know, he's dropped off. And then some of these young players that are coming through, are they focused enough? No. They've got great talent. Are they focused? I, I remember when, when I was at that FIFA um, thing last year and I was chatting to Troy Deeney, right? And you know, when he came out and he said that thing about Cajonas, a lot of people criticised him. Mm. Listen, he's he's, right. he, I, I, I'm not just saying it because I've grown very friendly with, it, with the guy now. He was right. Yeah. And what I remember in that room, this is why I know that his, what he was saying it was not a, um, like, maybe he should have said it in a slightly different way, but he was saying it in general to me in that room. He, you know what he, I remember he was looking around in that, in that room and there was a lot of young football, footballers in that room at that FIFA thing, right? And they were all strolling around and Gucci back and this and that. And he said to me, he goes, Robbie, you know what? He goes, you know what the problem is with a lot of these young players now? He wasn't just talking about Arsenal, he was just talking in general. There's lots of different players from different clubs there. He said, they play 10 games for the season and they, they think they've had it. some great career, they're having a great career. And he goes, you know what, I always sit them down and tell them. He goes, when you've played 10 years mm. in the Premier League or in a first team, that's when you've had a great career. Yeah. When you've only played 10 games, you ain't done nothing yet. You know the thing nothing. is? Nothing, and yeah. that's what I'm saying. That's the thing. Troy don't hold no punches, man. No, I've, he doesn't. I've been chatting to him a lot recently as well, and he's like, yeah, he just doesn't pull any punches. He'll say it yeah, how well, it is. Yeah, and, 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 and I think that's what's needed at Arsenal right now. Mm. It needs somebody there that doesn't pull punches and that, you know, gets hold of some of these young, talented players, and also the senior players that say, it. yo, yo. This is not good enough, and if you ain't, you don't shape up, man. Listen, uh, listen. Laters. 
I was having a chat with Ian Wright the other day when he was oh, at the... Uh, right, he's been tearing into them. And the thing is, what did Wrighty turn around and say? Wrighty publicly came out and said that he knows there's youngsters at that club who are making up excuses about coming into training. I'm not well today. I'm ill. They're turning up late. Um, officials are having to go and bang down their door to get them up and get them to training. That's disgraceful. Are you mad? Now, for me, really, no, no official should be dang banging down their Not door. Me. You should leave them there. Yeah, and then go and take their wages away. You should leave them there and no wages. Uh, uh, honestly, and that's the. Th I think when you think of Pep Guardiola, could you imagine that? No, no, Pep uh, yeah. would be the one that goes to their yard. <laughs> could you imagine? I, I, I don't even think Pep would go to the yard. I just think Pep would say to him, "Yeah, don't, don't come in. Don't yeah. even bother don't come bother. back. Don't bother." See you later. Just hand bye -bye. in your locker key. You know what I mean? You, I don't care how much money we're paying you. You're not playing for the rest of the season. I, I think he's that sort of guy that, that, that they know. Don't he's, mess around. He's ruthless, man. And we're really lacking that in every area of Arsenal Football Club right now. And it is really something we've got to get to what, grips. I see, I see Martin Keown come around and say it. And he said that he's been offering his services to Arsenal for years. And they've refused it. Mm. He said, I would drive down from Oxford every day. David Seaman said he, went, he was there. and yeah, I had a chat with David he, he Seaman. Felt, when he I felt was very there. uncomfortable. He didn't go back. Yeah, he, I, I had a chat with David when uh, we was filming together. Mm. And I said, I'd love to see you back. I, I, I genuinely would. I look at our goalkeeping coaches. There's, there's something wrong because our goalkeepers just turn to shit when they're at this club. No, Jens Lehmann's there now, though. No, no, but Jens Lehmann's not co goalkeeper. No, but Jens Lehmann's in the... No, but he's not know? coaching. He's, he's got another directive. He's not mm. doing the goalkeeping coaching. All right? You look at... Czech comes to the club. He's conceded more goals in three years than he did in 11 years at Chelsea. There's no coincidence. Well, it's a better team than Chelsea what, than what, when he was playing. Wojciech you know, Ches, uh, Chesney. Defense. Look at the difference in him. And it ain't just Juventus mm. since he's gone there when he was... And was he, you don't hear about no discipline issues or nothing. And he, exactly. and he was another one of those young players at Arsenal where, you know, every exactly. smoking in the... And, and, and smoking and after in the changing rooms and after... Is, and this is what we're trying to say, Robbie. There's no discipline there. None of these... I said to David Simba, I said, I'd love to see you back at the club with Fig. And I could tell that he was pretty... Even though we weren't on camera and we were talking off camera, he was quite uncomfortable about it. Like, mm. he didn't want to divulge into it too much but there's something you know what I mean bring these players back man Brighton can we win it no you think we'll lose probably <laughs> AC Milan no probably going to be another 3-4-0 if we win it if we win what if we win those two games we've still got to play Atletico Madrid probably <laughs> <laughs> come on man Jesus, Robbie, why am I going to be positive? I want to, I, I, just as we're ending here, I want to do a little poll. What are you laughing about? <laughs> you and your polls. Ah, I want to I wanna find out how people are feeling about this. Um, Arsene Wenger, do you... <laughs> why are you laughing? Stop, this is a serious question now. Arsene Wenger, would you want him to be sacked right now? Now? Everybody watching this, you are in charge of Arsenal. You, are, we have given you total charge. You're Stan Kroenke. It's your club. You're in charge. You're the main um, holder of the club, and your decision is what everybody's going to go off. Yeah. Would you sack him now, or yes? Do you allow him to see out his contract? Simple question. No. Would you sack him? No, actually, not. No, no, no. I'm going to change that. <laughs> Would you sack him now? Right? Or would you at least allow him to the end of the season? So would you allow him to the end of the season? Or does he get sacked immediately like what DT says? Um, let me know. I also want you to tell me in the comments what you feel about the whole situation right now. Are we being too harsh on the manager? I want to hear from people that have got support for the manager that would like him to stay on me. I have been finding it hard to find those people. Um, I want to hear from you guys in the comments as well. Put forward your your arguments so that we can have a look at those as well. Um, this is, I don't want this to be a one-sided debate, um, so put those forward. Um, and let's hope, you know, um, that from now till the end of the season, it, listen, it, at the end of the day, we do have to remember the last couple of games have been against the best team in this country. They are 30 points ahead of us, but they're also what about the one 16 points that? ahead of the... What about the, the one before that against Osterson? <laughs> Right, leave your comments below. <laughs> all right, leave your comments below. It's simple, isn't it, man? 